Welcome to Vinny's Vinny's Talk. Welcome you guys to Vinny's Talk. Go ahead and like and subscribe to the videos. And thank you guys for joining today's podcast. <clears throat> we are going to be talking about the Idaho 4 case, right? So much going on right now. Um, breaking news tonight we have learned once again these are just my opinions and my thoughts before i start the video tonight breaking news we have learned that miss kaylee we've learned that her wounds that were found on her body her injuries were significantly um more brutal than Maddie's and supposedly other victims. Now, what does that tell us, guys? What does that tell us? That tells us a lot of things that could tell us that this is more in a, um, of a target attack, right? But it also could tell us that it could be a random attack, too. I mean, it gives us insight that this person who is responsible, this killer, once again, this killer, we need justice, guys. The communication be with the police and the prosecutor and all this other jazz. There needs to be a little bit better communication between them two and just the community, you know what I mean? But from what I get from reading into this and learning about <clears throat> significant brutal injuries to um, Kaylee is that is it indeed a crime of passion? Did this person want some type of retribution or something against her because things might have not worked out? It's possible, but we don't know that. But it's definitely possible. But I also have a lot of questions um, from the night of the killing and leading up to Going back to the house about 145 is set to be everyone when everyone was set to be back at the house. But we want to look at into the more people that were cleared. We want the detectives to get more involved in why did they clear people so fast? And they should be looking into everyone and DNA testing everyone, right? But also where was Ethan and Xana, they were set to be seen around 8 and 9 o'clock, but there was a big gap because they weren't set to be back at the house until about 145, 156. So where were they, guys, right? And what happened with that 911 call in the middle of the field right next to the fraternity? A lot of questions. Something could have went down there. But the fact that we're learning about Kaylee's injuries and the fact that they were both Maddie and Kaylee were found in, in, in her room, Maddie's room. Now, let's go back to this for a second because when you think about how they found in Maddie's room, um, when you go back to the beginning of when Kaylee just had arrived because Kaylee wanted to show off her new car to her sister too, not blood sister, but her best friend, you know, Maddie. They, they, she wanted to show off her car. So you would think that she was getting ready to move out. She wasn't really going to live there anymore. So I'm thinking that maybe she wasn't in her room because she was chilling with Maddie. And she might have had clothes on the bed. You know what I'm saying? And this this gets me to think that with the killer, when the killer went in the house, or was he potentially in the house, right, guys? Um, this is just my investigative mind trying to think about this. But maybe there was things all over the bed and, and, and clothes and she was getting ready to pack. And she, that's why she was hanging out with her, her best friend, right? Now, you can only imagine it was really dark. So if this indeed was a target attack, they, these girls, they look sort of like each other. So, I mean, you can't really tell the difference when you're stabbing somebody or when you see somebody. So I feel like this makes it a little bit, I mean, obviously distinguished where it gives you a little bit more insight, but it also, I feel like it's a little bit more harder now 
with with this releasing of information if it in fact is very true right um I still have no leads. It's three weeks, guys. We're three weeks into the kit into this case, and we have family members that are really concerned, right? Um, uh, Kaylee's dad is very passionate, man. On TV, he wants answers. We need answers. Um, you know, I feel like from the very beginning, uh, law enforcement really didn't kind of handle things that, that in the way they should have. They're keeping things. And I understand they're keeping things in a knit, knit tight to the vest. You know, they want to keep things confidential in, in a homicide investigation, right? But I guess if you're looking at it in from a law enforcement background, I really think if they really want to do things the correct way, and I'm not saying they're not doing things correct way. I'm just saying like if they really want to hit the hit the camel on the head you know with this one or oh man they need to be out there passing out flyers talking to more people investigating more doing car stops truck stops cars or whatever the f case may be the police department needs to do that because this is a case that they probably haven't seen you know in years in a small town like idaho there's not a big population guys you guys have to remember that this is not like Chicago or New York City. Got the lights in the background. You know, this is a very small town. Um, so you have to remember that things are a lot different. People handle things differently. And it's the same thing. It's kind of like the same thing of when, <clears throat> when I was talking about Truckee in the mountain town. This is a rural area. So police, they're not really... Even though they might be, they went to school and they know how to handle this kind of stuff. They haven't seen nothing like this of a homicide with four people brutally murdered. Brutally murdered. <clears throat> they haven't seen something like this in a long time. So, <clears throat> I don't know. Sometimes I, f I really do feel like that they should pass it on to the FBI and let them handle it. Um, <clears throat> but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, but yeah, I really do have a lot of questions as a lot of YouTubers do. And this just gives us insight as, cause this could be a very well, a targeted attack. I mean, with this insight of significantly more brutal, she was found with brutally, you know, brutally harmed injuries. Like, um, <clears throat> I don't know. It's just, uh. It seems like it's, it's passionate. This person really wanted to do something like, I guess, maybe a crime of passion. In a way, guys, I'm not sure because it could still be a rando attack, but we don't know until the facts come out. But my personal opinion is that I'm not, I mean, <clears throat> I kind of lean back and forth with it. But the more time goes on, I feel it's just going to be tougher and tougher. And it's it's just very odd, guys. Um, they need to do some more digging into Kaylee's ex. And I'm not saying he is responsible in any way. or I'm just saying there could be a possibility in anyone that they cleared so quickly. You know what I mean? To keep digging. Like I said, doing these car stops talking to people, shaking people's hands, seeing what the town has to offer, right? And I have a funny feeling about the fraternity. There's some things there we don't need. I mean, dude, they should be going around asking people at the fraternity, I need to take your DNA test. This person needs to take a DNA test. Come forward so people can get some closure and the town of Moscow and Idaho can have some relief. But... The perpetrator will be brought to justice, right? It's only a matter of time. I believe this case will be solved by the people of Idaho, the people of Moscow, giving tips, right? Let's hear the tips and and, and uh, do your due diligence. The key to my podcast is, is spreading awareness and getting this justice that 
these students deserve, these kids deserve, you know what I mean? Justice for <clears throat> for Kaylee, for Xana, Ethan, and <clears throat> Maddie, you know what I'm saying? Uh, four beautiful souls and didn't deserve this, right? Now, when you take it back to the crime scene and you look at the pictures and you look at the in the front of the house and uh, there was reports saying that Xana's dad had just been there like the weekend prior fixing locks and stuff of that nature. <clears throat> and then you look at the back of the house where it's kind of wooded where they expanded the crime scene. Now I can only imagine if the killer went in that way, went towards the back of the house, went on the second floor of the slider. But like I said, it was lit up like a Christmas tree, right? Um, presume that's where the girls were taking a lot of pictures, where it's open, where people could see them, where a potential person was watching them. And then you have that screen right there where someone could just get right in there. But see then, that's when I think have this theory where someone was watching them and lear learning about their whereabouts and stalking them. And <clears throat> But that's just my theory on one set of the story. But there's so many different ways you could look at this story. It's possible that the person could have just been waiting there for them too. I guess if it's truly a targeted attack, then the person could have been there and had it planned out, correct? I mean, that's some scary shit though, man. And justice for these kids, man, it's crazy. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean significant more brutal injuries to Kaylee tells us a lot and if you look at it from a different standpoint it it could tell us a lot into the case where it could also be more difficult this makes things more difficult because they were found in Maddie's room where the room was dark guys it was dark I mean they're both they both have blonde hair right <clears throat> It's, it's it's crazy to think about, but and I don't understand how they say that they found Ethan in the kitchen or on the floor or something like that, or was he really in the room when he passed away? Azana was in the room. A lot of questions that we need answers to, and the police department and the way they handled the things in the beginning wasn't the correct. Maybe it wasn't the correct way. I know I have faith. That they will do things the right way. But yeah, guys, I want to thank you guys for joining my podcast today. I'm going to say uh, like, subscribe to my videos. Have a moment in silence for the victims of this tragedy, okay? Kaylee, Maddie, Ethan, and Xana. little moment of silence here, guys. All right, guys, well, this is the podcast, and I appreciate you guys. I love you, and uh, let's get justice and, and keep raising awareness, and uh, let's keep covering this case and bring light to the situation, all right? Thank you, guys. Peace.